It's getting close to the holidays, and you know there's plenty of games to get happy about this year. This week, it's back to Azeroth in the far reaches of Northrend as we show you some of the cool new stuff you may not have seen yet. The Last Remnant makes it to the show this week, as well as a kingdom for Keflings and Crash Commando. You think you've got chops, soldier? Get online with the Killzone 2 public beta, and you might be able to get the drop on our very own Ryan McDonald. But don't count on it, son. We've got bullets with your username on them. This week, on the spot. Well, hello there, and welcome to another uh, edition of On The Spot. I'm your host, Brian Eckford, joined by Kristen Riley, and we have a great show for you today. As we mentioned, we have some PSN games, we have some Xbox Live games, and we have the beta for Killzone 2. But Kristen Riley, what I want to know is now that the new Xbox experience is here, have you created your Xbox Live avatar? Yes, I have, and actually, I, I need to upload it. I, there's a URL that I found where you can totally get the entire avatar yeah. in uh, this clear thing, and you can use that everywhere. So I actually have that. I need to start uploading it, though. But yeah, no, I, that was the first thing I did. Are you joking me? Well, they, and there's not enough shoes. Yeah, they need more shoes. And uh, but they got plenty of hairstyles. And one of the things we had fun with yesterday is we sabotaged uh, Sophia's. She wasn't I, looking. We went into uh, I, I wish didn't we could know show you could it. do that. I wish we could show it, but we took over Xbox and sabotaged and made it into a zombie. It was awesome. Well, no, but you can, you can play with someone's avatar when they're just sitting in the menu from your Xbox. What? Yeah. You can change Did, how they look, I too? I think so. I, I know it happened to Dom McShay That's like hacking. yesterday. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, and I was checking on Netflix, too. Oh, don't Pretty you love awesome. it? Pretty awesome. Oh, my lord. It, it's, and the quality is so much better than your laptop. Yeah. But, but you know, there was, well, there's something Tor is going to get to about that. Yeah, I'm, we got I'm, some, I'm not going to spoil that one. Yeah, uh, and uh, it's good that you brought that up because Tor Thorson will be back with all the news. We're going to be talking to him about the news. If you guys have questions about, the, about anything that's going on news-wise, he's here. So send us, a, uh, send us a question on the spot at GameSpot.com, and we will try to get your question answered by news expert Tor Thorson. Uh, but, Kristen, I think we have a video we're going to start off the show with. Uh, of course, the holidays are coming up very soon, and we've got a gamer's gift bag video. Uh, it's all about Rock Band 2, some of the really cool accessories you can get for your Rock Band 2 experience. Let's check that out right now. Everyone loves to feel like a rock star, and with Rock Band 2 this holiday season, everyone can capture that feeling. Sometimes, though, rock star just doesn't cut it. Occasionally, you need to raise the bar a bit and go for super rock star. With all that's being offered this season, it will be easy to take your rocker from stardom to superstardom. The Rock Band Stage Kit, exclusive on the Xbox 360, is our first pick. This kit brings you one step closer to the experience of a real stage with a smoke machine, fog juice, and a light that automatically syncs up to the music and vocal tracks in the game. For $100, this isn't something we see anyone but the most hardened Rock Band partiers purchasing. For the gamer on the go, or if you've run out of corners to stash drum kits in, the new Mad Cat's portable drum kit is for you. Ultra light, ultra portable, and ultra sturdy. This drum kit is compact without compromising quality. Toss the drum heads down on any flat, sturdy surface, plug into your Xbox 360, and drum away. Mad Cats has even managed to incorporate a compact foot pedal with an extra long attached cable as well as included drumsticks. At $49.99, this drum kit's a great alternative to full kits. Sometimes you just need the real thing, especially when playing bass. This holiday Mad Cats understands and is coming to your rescue with the Rock Band Fender Precision Bass Replica. Longer than the usual Rock Band guitar and with a split strum bar, you'll be able to jam like never before. This new bass gives you the ability to pluck notes like a real bass player as well as look like one with an official Fender bass strap and bass length guitar. There isn't a whammy bar on this guitar, but there is a whammy knob if you feel like using the bass for lead guitar. Priced at $69.99, this bass guitar is going to be a must-have to complete your band. If you're a neat freak, there's now a way to store all your plastic guitars without taking up valuable closet space. Mad Cats has come out with a triple tree guitar stand that offers three foam hangers to keep your guitars safe and up off the floor. Because this stand has an adjustable neck, this guitar stand can also be used with the bass guitar. At $29.99, this is definitely a steal. Rock and roll has always been about going big, and this next drum kit is no exception. The Ion Drum Rocker Premium Drum Set for Rock Band 2 takes drumming to a whole new level. An aluminum frame, adjustable drum heads and cymbals, velocity-sensitive drum pads, and an all-metal foot pedal means you're going to be rocking longer, 
and harder than anyone else. Since this kit was built by engineers that make real electronic drum kits, this one surpasses all the plastic sets out there. You're now able to set your drums up in whatever configuration is most comfortable for you, as well as your cymbals. The foot pedal can not only be positioned anywhere on the floor that's comfortable for you, but it has built-in retractable spikes and Velcro to make sure it's not going to go anywhere once you start playing. This realistic experience comes at a price of $299. While the Ion Drum Rocker is our most expensive accessory for Rock Band 2, it's something that will withstand the test of time. From simple replacements for stock instruments to a stage kit to enhance your Rock Band experience, there's something for everyone this holiday season no matter what their rocker status is. Be sure to check back at GameSpot.com for all your holiday needs brought to you by GameStop. There you go. That's uh, uh, the, the first of our uh, Gamers Gift Bag. Uh, of course, the holidays are coming up. We've got uh, the gamers, the holiday gift guide, all sorts of stuff coming up. So if you don't know what to get your loved one, we will help you with that. Uh, right now, uh, that by the way, Karen, my wife, that bass is awesome. You know, Christmas is coming, hon. Uh, let's go to Tor Thorson right now. He's got uh, an update on everything that's going on news-wise. And while he is get, getting us caught up, if you have some specific questions, send them my way, send them our way at onthespotatgamespot.com, and we will get as many of them answered by uh, Tor as we can. Tor, what's going on in the world of news? What's going on? What isn't going on in the world of news? It's been a crazy, crazy week. The biggest story came out this morning, actually. They finally dated the Grand Theft Auto 4 downloadable content. And it was supposed to come out this year, but surprise, it didn't. But it looks pretty cool, and it really isn't what you expected. It's called... It's called, uh, what's it called? Uh, it's, it's like Sons of Anarchy. I'm a big fan of that show I'm calling it. It's called uh, The Lost and the Damned. Hmm. And you're like, okay, great. So Nico Belich is lost and damned, right? No, it's about this biker gang, the lost he encountered in the game. And it's got a whole new protagonist whose name is, it's like Jason Klebnitz or something like that. So it's a totally different guy. It's going to mostly be set in Alderney, which is like the New Jersey in the game. And it's going to have a whole new storyline, new multiplayer modes, and it's also going to have new music as well. So they're going to have to probably add some, like, you know, I don't know, some speed metal biker rock station or something like that. It looks really interesting, and it's out February 17th, the same day as Street Fighter 4. So if you're a 360, and it's 360 exclusive as well. So if you're a 360 person, you're going to have to start saving your money if you've recovered after Christmas anyway. So Nico's not in it at all? Nico makes an appearance as a supporting character. Okay. And so that's, that's, that, 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 that's, the, that's the big deal about that. But, I mean, no, they, they, I guess they've figured out the, the Nico storyline is finally finished because, okay. I guess, with, you know, my American dream is done. So that's... <laughs> That's it. So, anyway, that's also one last point. It's the first of two episodes because there was a deal for episodic content. It wasn't clear how much it was going to be. Now it's for two episodes. This is the first, and they're both Xbox 360 exclusive. And for those of you who've been digging around financial reports, it's reportedly Microsoft paid 50 million bucks to get these exclusive on the 360. So that's a lot of money. All so, right. Anyway, other big news. Speaking of a lot of money, uh, World of Warcraft: Wrath of the Lich King finally came out, and in 24 hours it sold 2.8 million copies worldwide. Now, we can't get a indefinite price on that because of currency fluctuations, but at the American price of $39.99, that's almost $108 million in 24 hours. Wow. And, you know, and, and Blizzard makes about $100 million a month anyway, just kind of just, you know, on their regular avenue. So, it's a, so our friend Bob is, you know, drinking champagne <laughs> right now. Kaleiko, I'm looking at you. All right, so um, and there was uh, 15,000 midnight launch events, and um, the only game to even come close to this was Burning Crusade, which sold 2.4 million copies in its first 24 hours when it launched in, in January uh, 17, 2007. But back then, WoW only had 8 million subscribers, so it's kind of it's not clear if this is as huge of a hit as it might be, but you know, we're at such stratospheric numbers now anyway, it kind of doesn't really matter. And by the way, this guy right here, who is that? Sorry, I'm not used to this. <laughs> Other side. <laughs> Other side. This, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That guy scared the heck out of me at the uh, event. He, he looked like John Wayne right Gacy with, uh, with, with Hello Kitty makeup. So if you see this person, stay away. All right, He's wanted in several countries. Anyway, next up was the next box. As you guys said, the, the new Xbox experience launched. And it was a pretty smooth launch, except for last night. They were um, having some issues with freezing in the menus, especially the avatar editing menus. I myself had it freeze three times in an hour, and I was trying to goof around my avatar, which looks boringly like me. I think I might make a little Jacob tonight, a little Rastafarian action going on. But anyway, so I talked to just talked to Microsoft, get off the phone with them. They said they were doing some kind of network updates. Then surprise, because they just launched, and they said that hopefully it'll be resolved soon. So if these freezes persist in a week, then we can be mad. Now you can just kind of just be irked, you know, because you have to, you know, boot up and boot down your console. Tor, do you agree that we need more shoes? I do agree we need more shoes because the only sneakers options are, 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 are I mean, the sponsorship things there, I mean, you know, a guy who used to work here, our dear friend Tim Tracy, you know, he gets like 106 kind of sneakers. Men like shoes too. It's That's not right. just you, Kristen, okay? <laughs> All right. 
So anyway, but one thing that is kind of bad about the new Xbox experience is the day before it launched, um, we found out that all these videos that are on Netflix's streaming service would not be available on there. And a large chunk of these videos are from, you know, from Columbia Pictures. Well, who owns Columbia Pictures? Sony. Microsoft. Ah, surprise. No. So Sony. I guess Sony, um, the, the, those, and those Sony offerings will be available on, on your PC for streaming, but somehow the, the rights for, for, for the, on the Xbox evaporated. So Unbelievable. That, that's kind of a, it's not official yet. I talked to one of the guys at Netflix, and he was like, well, certain studios, you know, it's licensing rights, they have and flow, and, you know, you know PR, executive, whatever. So, um, <laughs> but it's kind of, it's, it's a little disappointing, because a lot of those are some really good stuff. And, and also, because of licensing, a lot of the games you might notice in your Netflix QC, they're gonna, it's, it's going to be available for streaming on December 1st. And so that's, because, that's not because of, of the 360 issue. That's just a general kind of, you know, it, it, it's, it's what happens to these licenses for streaming. The licenses, the studios, you know, revoke them and they add them, you know, from time to time. So it's not just, it's over, so you see something in your Netflix queue right now that says it's not available on December 1st. That's not necessarily related to the Sony thing. Though Sony is kind of giving the finger to Microsoft. Anyway, next up on there, uh, let me start my little chart here, blah, blah. Speaking of it, last week we asked the question, how much exactly did Wii Music sell? And we didn't find out until you know, later on when the raw numbers came out from NPD. And it sold under 81,000 units, which is an unmitigated failure for, for a Nintendo you know, title, I can't say. Why do I say that? Because Wii Fit sold almost 700,000 units, so 687,000 units when it launched. And Wii Play continues to sell really well, selling 282,000 units last month. Now, these are they're the big four non-gaming title, non-gaming titles that uh, Miyamoto conceived when he conceived the Wii Fit. And you know, so of those four, Wii Music is the only stinker. But of course, why are the other three doing really well? Because Wii Sports is packed in with the Wii itself. Wii Fit comes with a balance board. And, you know, and, then, and then Wii Play, which isn't a particularly good game, comes with a remote. So that's the secret there. But a big disappointment for Nintendo there. Also interesting, some more numbers came out, is, is Guitar Hero World Tour versus Rock Band 2. Now, Guitar Hero World Tour um, won the month, because everyone was wondering, you know, why isn't it on the top 10? Because it's spread over all these different you know, product SKUs. It sold a combined four, 400 and Sorry, 534,000 units on, on the Wii, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. So that's pretty good, right? Well, um, well Rock Band didn't do so bad either. It sold 238,000K you know, uh, just on two you know, platforms. So that's also really interesting and stuff. So, but, I mean, but I guess the biggest disappointment is that you know, you, you'd think World Tour would have sold a little bit better because of the popularity of, of Rock Band. So a lot of analysts are wondering now, is the rhythm music market finally saturated? So that's your rock band and music news there. And for the, your, for the two arena football fans out there. Me. The, yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, where, where, the PlayStation Network now? Oh, I must have skipped the story, sorry. Anyway, um, Sony actually also announced that the, uh, that, the, that the PlayStation, there are now 14 million subscribers of the PlayStation Network. Now that is, you know, sounds really impressive, especially because Xbox Live has, you know, you know, has 40 million subscribers. But actually, the reality is that, isn't, that, that we're not sure if that is all PlayStation 3 units. I got talked to somebody today who says that that might actually include PSP users as well. And if that's the case, then that number is a little bit disingenuous. Sony is getting to get back to us on that. Anyway, next up, is this the arena one? Are we up here? Yay, yeah. arena yeah. football. So for the two, there's one, arena Yay. football uh, football fans out there, you can be glad or sad that EA has dropped the license. You know, this is 2K's chance, I guess, to get back in the football game and dust off all those all-pro football assets. But, you know, it's also, you know, kind of indicative of, of that, you know, I don't know, what, it's not popular? I'm not really sure what that means, but it's, anyway. It's not a good license. Okay, there's a sports guy. He knows. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got Dead Rising won a copyright case. Uh, Capcom sued, uh, or Capcom was sued by the makers of the Dawn of the Dead movie, which is really hilarious. And uh, they claim that that they claim that that the similarities were so were so similar. And check out these some of these uh, claims. Both the zombies in both the film Dawn of the Dead and the game Dead Rising wear plaid shirts. That's <laughs> the reason they sued. Okay, that's one of them. Another one was both were set in a mall. Yeah. Well, so that's another reason. So they were claiming undis un undisclosed undisclosed damages and submitting get this Wikipedia articles into court as legal documents. So the judge quite reasonably. Well, threw it out. You mean Wikipedia isn't part of LexisNexis? Uh, afraid not, no. And it's not an Encyclopedia Britannica either. So. Easy for you to say. Hey, hey, Tor, I have yeah. some questions from, from readers. All right. From viewers. Sorry. Uh, obviously, Thanksgiving coming up next week. And so a lot of people are wondering about uh, 
like crazy deals coming for Black Friday? Black Friday, there are some crazy deals. Some, uh, some, some uh, screen. There, I know a, a, a scan of um, the GameStop ones up bouncing around out there. It shows that you can get like Graw too. But a lot of these crazy deals are contingent on you actually buying a console. So if you already have a console, you're probably not going to get as good a deal out there. Specifically, I'm not sure of any great deals out there right now that come out to, come to mind. But you know, just well, obviously check your sun, your paper on Sunday. There's bound to be some crazy flyers in there. Well, let me ask you about one in particular. Adrian Jordan mm -hmm. uh, from Hinesville, Georgia, wants to know if you'd heard of a of an Amazon $199 PS3 deal on Black Friday. Have you heard anything about that? No. No. Okay. I would like to though. Yeah. Be a nice deal. All right, Tor. Well, thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, right now, we are going to go to a, uh, a clip of a new game coming up from IDOS. It's called Battle, St Battle Stations Pacific. Let's check that out right now. Let's get this clear. We didn't start this war. We've been attacked without warning on our own soil. And all that we stand for is at stake. We're ordinary men with families and thoughts a thousand miles away. Ordinary men will be asked to take lives and give up our own in the name of freedom. We've faced and defeated our enemy at Midway. And we'll keep fighting with pride and valor. Until we gain the inevitable triumph. We didn't start this war. But we'll damn well finish it. And there you go, there's a look at Battle Stations Pacific uh, coming soon. Uh, right now we've got Justin Calvert joining us and he is logging in right now to World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King. Justin, how are you, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good, thank you. I will be just as soon as I get logged in with my secret code. Oh, you got the like, authenticator? I do. Nice. All right, so we uh, we're loading this up. Obviously, this game's been out for, what, a week or so? Uh, yeah, just little, a week. I guess it was, it, was, it was like midnight. Oh, did I just log myself out again? Oh, boy. Sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah, it's been out for a week, and you've been uh, trouncing through all of the new content as you prepare your review. Oh, yes. And there's a lot it's, to, there's to get There's a through, lot. Right? i got to say, there's a lot more to the expansion than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I deliberately didn't spend a whole lot of time with the, with the beta version because right. I... You know, I want to come to the review and be it be fresh. I don't want to be playing it and thinking, oh, I already saw all this stuff and right. that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, my uh, my main character, which is a level was well, now a level seventy four rogue. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I don't know why I'm not seeing anything here. Yeah, all we're getting is a cursor right now. We might need some help out here to figure out what's going on, guys. But let's talk about uh, you. You have a rogue that's now le level seventy. I've rogue that's level seventy four. Yeah, I'm, I'm leveling like three characters right now. Okay. Basically, there's uh, there's my rogue who yeah is seventy four. There's uh, there's my hunter actually who's just now gotten to a level where he can go to Northrend. He's mm -hmm. like sixty eight. Oh, here we go. Uh, and then there's uh, then there's the Death Knight, which is the new class, right? Of course. Um, Okay, so... Slowly but surely. Yes. I, my character will show up in a second. Uh, so, I guess my question, Justin, is when you, when yeah. you start out in an MMO like this, you're going to be reviewing it. What's your strategy? Where do you start? <laughs> it's, it's really hard because, you know what, like the... I mean, when I reviewed Burning Crusade, my big thing was, okay, whatever happens, I have to get to level 70 right. because I have to try out the flying mount. Right. With this one, it's not quite as clean cut as that because there isn't any one feature that makes like as as strong a bullet point, if you like, as uh, as a flying mount. Mm -hmm. uh, so the things, I mean, the first thing I did actually was uh, I went straight to the Death Knight starter area mm -hmm. because that's one of the things I knew that was going to be really tough once there were a lot of people logged in. So at midnight, the second the servers went live, I was there and I got through there in about two hours. 
and that was that. So like I finished Death Knight, the Death Knight story. Yeah, but yeah. about two hours. Okay. Um, sorry, we've got something running in the background here, and it's not helping. Uh, so uh, you want to just hand it over? I think hand That's it over to them and see if they can fix it. And we'll just talk sorry. about what else, whatever else is going on. Um, so you finished the Death Knight stuff. So yeah. There's a lot of new areas to, the, to explore, a, right? Yeah, there's a ton of new areas. So the Death Knights start in their own area, and it's. Uh, they have a lot of very unique quests. So mm -hmm. I would say that their start area is probably one of the better areas that you're ever likely to have seen in, in this game, if it's the first thing you check out with the expansion. Uh, you have to go and steal your own mount. There's a, there's a quest called Grand Theft Palomino yes, or something. Really um, I love riding the little tiny ponies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you get, to, you get to ride around on a dragon, and you have to kind of breathe fire to kill villagers and that kind of stuff. And then at the same time, like if your health gets low, you kind of go down and eat villages to restore your, your health and mm -hmm. your, your mana and stuff. I think we might be up and okay. running. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, so somewhere here is, okay, there, there we go. There you go. So I'm, even if you're playing the game, there's a pretty good chance that you haven't been here yet because this is the new, the new hub city of Dalaran. Mm -hmm. uh, you might remember that uh, near Alterac in the original game, uh, there was a, Dalaran was there at that point. It was a city that was confined under a big kind of magic dome to, to keep bad guys out or something. Now, if you go there, there's just a giant crater in the ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's because this city is now, it's up in the air, it's floating up in the air, which is ah. why it's actually quite difficult to get to when you start playing, because you, you can't use your flying mount until level 77 in the expansion. Uh, so there's a few things of note here. There's um, like every, each, every profession and every class now has its own store, mm -hmm. which is a, certainly a new thing. And it makes it really easy to you know, find the stuff that you need. Uh, over here, there's something pretty cool. This is the, the mount vendor for mm. Northrend. And you can see here that there's the bear, which is the same as the one I'm riding. Uh, there's a, a white snowy griffin flying That's mount. Cool. And then this guy, who costs like 20 grand. 20 grand? Is, uh, yeah, he, he basically has room for three people. Ah. And he also carries a, uh, he carries like a, a vendor around with him. Uh -huh. So you don't have to keep going back to town to sell items Ooh, and that kind of stuff. It. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the other cool thing about this city is it has a sewer system, and you go down here, and there's like a whole kind of under there's like an underground fight scene, and there's mm -hmm. uh, yeah there's there's different stores here. There's a there's an inn down here, which is actually one of the few. Uh, this is actually one of the only places that both factions can get together mm -hmm. because Dalaran's divided up uh, by the two factions. So the, down here is where the two come together. And if I was on a PvP server, which I'm not right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably have some trouble getting around here. Uh, do you have a sense, having played the game for a week or so now, how how much content in terms of landmass there is compared to Burning Crusade? Uh, I would say, in terms of landmass, it's probably similar. Mm -hmm. uh, but it actually seems like they've packed more and more quests into each zone. Hmm. Like I, th I feel like you could probably get to level eighty, and only visit maybe half of the zones mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is okay. This is my exit here, which mm. not don't ever do it, Justin. Don't, 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 do it. don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> but uh, oh, so this is this is a long way down, uh -huh. and it's it's not the smartest way to go down on a on a bear, right? But I'm an engineer, so it's all good. You made a parachute. I, I did. I made a parachute, and actually, this is something else I should say. They've I mean they've they've tweaked a lot of the professions and stuff, and one of the things they're really trying to do with the expansion is like they've acknowledged the fact that like yeah you know what we have too many buttons and we have like like bag space is a problem for a lot of people so they've come up with a lot of ways to uh reduce bag space so as an engineer i can like the parachute cloak used to be a separate item that mm -hmm. i had to carry around now it's a lining that i apply to an existing cloak uh, and there's stuff like the tools that I, ca that I have to carry around for my profession, like a mining, ha a mining pick and a, a hammer for blacksmithing and that kind of stuff. That's now one item. And it's like, it's, it's all little things, but it all, it all adds up to the, you kind of not having to stress about bag space the whole time you're playing. That's pretty handy. 
Uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a, a question cool. from Chris, Kristen about the game for Justin. Kristen, do you have anything? I do. So Sarah from Chicago apparently is a newbie uh, WoW player, even more new than, or no, I'm more new than her because I don't play. But she wants to know, she's thinking of buying World of Warcraft and Wrath of the Lich King first. Is that a good idea or should she buy a different pack first and start there? Uh, so you actually, you can't play Wrath of the Lich King without having Burning Crusade. Mm. Um, so she would have to buy that and honestly, I mean the you can just buy the best thing to do is just start with the first game because the the Burning Crusade content, unless you want to play one of the classes that's only available in that expansion, or sorry, one of the races, uh, then you can't visit uh, you can't visit the area of Outland until level fifty eight anyway. And and, it, and to that end, this is this is most of the content here is meant for high level. Yeah, I mean everything. Yeah, this expansion doesn't have a whole lot of stuff for low-level players at all. It has a new inscription profession, mm -hmm. which is really fun. I'm doing that with my Death Knight. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, you can't get to Northrend until 68. Mm. So, so here I'm just showing, these are, uh, the reason I'm, I'm halved here is because this, I can get anywhere I want from this city. These are, mm. these are portals to all of the other capital cities. And then up here, there's something pretty cool, which, uh, which will please PvP fans, because up here, there are portals to all of the battlegrounds. Oh, nice. So you can get to those. And then here is something that I, I really want to show. And I, I don't know if it's going to be kicking off there right now or not, but this is Wintergrass, which is the... This is an entire zone dedicated to PvP. Okay. Uh, and it's... Uh, so Okay, so there isn't a battle going on right now. There's, there, there's, there's basically a 40-minute battle that kicks off every two and a half hours. Uh, if, I sh if I show you the map real quick. Oh, the next one's so you'll see, oh, so, huge. so right now, the, yeah, it's a huge map. And the, the Horde right now control this entire area, the fortress. Uh -huh. So as the Alliance, we have to take control of vehicle workshops, get siege vehicles, uh, knock down walls, mm -hmm. make our way into the middle. And then once you get there, within the 40 minutes, you have to take control of this Titan orb. Mm -hmm. And then that gives you control of the fortress. And only the faction that controls the fortress can use can enter the instance dungeon that's inside. Mm -hmm. So there's oh. a full-on like level 80 instance in there, and you can only get to it if your faction is winning PvP. That's really cool. So that's a really good incentive for people yeah. to get involved. And uh, as you can see on the map, it's a massive area. Oh, I imagine you get a lot of people in here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it has it hasn't kicked off in a really big way yet because it is primarily for level 80 mm -hmm. characters, but. Um, in fact, early on, I really took advantage of that, and I was mining here, and there was nobody else around. Uh, last night, I got into a fight with maybe 20 or 30 people, so it's it's picking up. Like more and more people are finding their way here, and oh, that's sorry, that's for defenders only, and I'm on offense. Let, let's get another question from Kristen. Our friend uh, Eduardo from Sao Paulo wants to know, Justin, what do you have to do to get that bear mount you were using? Oh, okay, yeah, so that the bear mount, this particular one actually is just uh, is just hard cash. You just uh, you go to Dalaran, and it costs 750 gold. Uh, there is another one that looks even better, which is black. Uh, to, to get that one, you have to unlock an, one of the new achievements, and the achievement is to kill uh, all of the, the uh, race leaders inside their capital cities, which if you've ever tried to do that, you know that that's no mean feat. Uh, but there are guilds who have done it, and so there are people riding around on, on black armored bears. And uh, what do we need to know about Inscription? Uh, so Inscription, Inscription, I'm not doing it on this character, but... Um, so basically, uh, that, um, that's the crafting profession. The, uh, the gathering profession associated with it is uh, herbalism. So you go around and you collect, pick flowers, if you like, mm -hmm. and, uh, but then rather than mixing them into potions, you, you're crushing them uh, to turn them into pigment. You use that pigment to make ink, uh, and then you apply that ink to parchments to make glyphs, mm -hmm. and then uh, every single, uh, every single career in the game uh, ha has, a, has, has its own unique set of glyphs, and you can only equip a certain number of them. And for the most part, they don't make you more powerful necessarily, but it's like a way for you to customize your character by trading off something. So, for example, uh, I think there's one. I try to think of one. There's one. I, there's one you can use. For example, I think it's like um, what is it? No, I've gone blank. But there's stuff like, for example, there's something like where maybe it makes your it makes one of your attacks less powerful, mm -hmm. but it makes the beneficial effect you get for it last longer, I or see. something like that. So, so it's a little like, bit of a trade-off. So the, but yeah, so you trade off something for something else. Okay. There are some like there's one for priests, I think, which it means like when they do their shield, 
instead of it just protecting the person they shield, it also heals them mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Uh, actually, you know what? I can look and see what glyphs I have applied here. Well, actually, we're running short on time, so I want to mention... Uh, I, I, I suspect it might have been causing the trouble at the beginning oh, of the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rogue thing. What are we, is that running on here right yeah, now? Yeah, let me let me let me check that out. So here this this go. is a rogue browser that's being developed by some uh, some friends of ours, and uh, I guess you can download this on Gamespot right now. Basically, allows you to browse the web as you're playing a game, so you could potentially watch on the spot. Yeah, which is the always cool, a good idea. Yeah, the cool thing was it. The really cool thing with it is that you can make it transparent. Yeah. So if you've got downtime during a game, I mean it's. You know what, it's taking up a lot of the screen right now because we're not playing at like a, the real big resolution. Right. If you were playing this game at like a real max resolution or something, you could easily have this up in a corner. You could be checking Thoughtbot, you could be checking Wowhead or whatever. Yep. Uh, you know, reading up on wh what loot is the next boss you're gonna kill, you know, what is he gonna drop? Uh, watching the lineup. Stuff. Well, yeah, watching the lineup, watching on the spot. Watching whatever, on the spot. Whatever you wanna do. And you can, down here, you've, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a thing here where you can optimize it for different things. Uh -huh. So, for example, in WoW, I mean, this obviously works with tons of games, but if you were on a very long Griffin flight or something like that, you know, you, you can have it and you're watching a video, you can set it so that the video gets the lion's share of the bandwidth. I like that. So the video runs smooth and the game's going to be choppy. It doesn't matter because you're not really playing it at that point. Very cool. And then you can switch back to the game. Well, so, that's yeah. available. I guess that's available for download on our site, guys. Do we have an address that people can access this at? Uh, I think Chris is going to give that to us. Uh, Justin, I know it's a long process, but what, you're working <laughs> on the review, the, right? the review's working, coming. Yeah, the review's coming. Uh, I'm actually, I'm planning to post something uh, either today or tomorrow, just like a kind of a big update on where I'm at, what I've been doing. Uh, I was hoping to get the review this side of Thanksgiving, Okay. but I'm not going to promise it. It might be like right, right after Thanksgiving. But these, these MMOs, they take a long time. There's a lot of oh, stuff they, to get they to. They do, and honestly, this one is, it's a lot bigger than I was expecting. There's yeah. like... I mean, yeah, there's, there, I mean, there are three starter zones. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's All right. a lot of stuff. Well, I know you'll be playing it for a good what, long while, and we'll be looking forward to your review. Thanks, Justin, for cool. being here. Yeah, Appreciate no it. Uh, we're standing by now with Kristen, who's got Ryan with him, and they're looking at Killzone. Hey, guys, we do. We have the Killzone 2 beta that we're going to show off. Ryan's sitting here. And really quick, for anyone that didn't catch that lower third, it's rogue.gotgame.com backslash GameSpot. So if you want to get that really cool browser, go check that out. But for now, Ryan's here. Hey, how's it going? You're, uh, you've been killing guys for quite a while here. Yeah, totally. And of course, it comes to our segment and like the the server that I'm currently on. It goes totally Empty. extinct. Yeah, totally. Everybody got out of here. But yeah, this is Killzone 2, uh, coming out February 17th. Obviously, one of the next big games for the PlayStation 3. A lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, now that of course, Little Big Planet is out. Yep. But yeah, uh, now, now we're going for the next one. Um, yeah, yeah. So Sony has two really big shooters. They've got the Resistance series, and they've also got the Killzone series, Absolutely. Um, which are both really good. But all, they're pretty. They're really completely different games. Like that. Uh, they definitely are. I mean, the weird thing is, if I could go, it'd be as so bold as to say that I think Killzone Two seems like a mix of Call of Duty Four and. Uh, Say I guess Team Fortress, mm -hmm. uh, just in the way that it handles the classes in Killzone 2, and in the gameplay, just straight up, you know, style of Call of Duty 4, and not just in terms of the actual gameplay when you're running around and doing stuff, uh, in terms of the control scheme that they have set up, which is, you know, I, I can't imagine you can like deviate too far from the the first-person shooter style now with the controller like we have today. But you know, pretty much you got one thumbstick that is your movement, your aiming. Um, yeah, then you've got the the other business where it's like you know the, I will say Killzone 2 has the most realistic EOTech uh, site ever 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 modeled before. Yeah, you, you do know that too. I know that for a fact. In mm -hmm. fact, <laughs> but uh, but really uh, the the neat thing. And let me see if I can actually do it right now. The neat thing with Killzone 2 is that you basically have uh, you can see there's not a whole lot of people on our server right now, but you can see that. The game basically allows 32 players, you know, simultaneous mm -hmm. multiplayer action. So, the, I don't know when the last time you were in a server with 32 people, but it gets super get crazy. crazy hectic. Yeah. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and join a game here and say the quick join, and that means the one that's the fastest. Just, please. We're just gonna join anyone. Uh, so while this comes up, but yeah, the, the, so they got seven different classes. You know, just get the the, the basic stuff out of what the way. What are some of those really quick? Do so yeah, they, so basically most of them are just what you'd expect. You got a medic dude that totally resi medic re revives people. Um, you've got you've got the engineer, of course, that mm -hmm. can set up turrets and uh, and have that happen kind of like Team Fortress style. But the the ones that are interesting are like, uh, for instance, the the tactician. The tactician, he can throw these smoke grenades that are basically uh, 
temporary spawn points. And here we go. That's nice. As we get into the match. And I will say this, if you look at the, the screen uh, right now, it basically gives you a selection of which team you want to go on, right? I, I, I highly recommend the ISA because the Hellgast, as you might know, they look like the straw dogs from uh, Jinro, that cool anime. Okay. Yeah. Um, the crazy thing about that is they have red faces. They glow. So you can totally see them. Oh, yeah, totally. It's like, we there, there's no to... hiding it with your red face. No, you got a red face that's glowing. Somebody's going to shoot it. <laughs> So let's see if I can. Uh, so or your teammate might try to shoot his own turret over there too. Oh yeah, you know people are uh, people are all awesome. over in this game. So yeah, the beta's been going on for a little while right now. It's not obviously super public, but there are quite a few people in here. There's always seems to be a server on. Um, so about the beta, we have been getting emails all day long asking about the beta. How do you get into the beta? Are we going to give keys away? Do you want to go ahead and kill the guy with the glowing red face yes. and then go ahead and answer that question? He's dead. Yes. So I, I do believe if you are not in the beta as of now, I don't believe that there is a way to get in here. Um, I do not know that for a fact, but I know in the U.S., uh, supposedly some of the folks that got in were, were some of the folks from the PlayStation Underground. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, the rest of us are, are folks like us here at GameSpot. But, uh, and you know, which, which would lead to the, the number of people that are not playing. There's not a whole lot of people out there right now. Um, so yeah, this, it doesn't seem like it's widely available to very many people, nor is it something that I think you can just look up on some website and jump into. But look at me, taking dudes out. That's what it's definitely all about. It's just nice. shooting dudes, whether in the face or the legs, like you saw there. <laughs> all right, let's definitely uh, keep rolling here. Brian, you want to toss some questions our way while we go ahead and try to get to these uh, destroy oh, points or die? Absolutely. die. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got a question from NDOT from the UK. Uh, he wants Ryan to talk about uh, the different maps that he's played and then what can you tell us about the different weapons he's seen? Sure. So the one thing I should get out of the way is the fact that in the beta, there's three maps that they're allowing us to play. Um, and they're all, they're actually, it's a pretty good variety, I'd say, because this one, I would say, is the, is the medium of them in the sense that it's not super wide open and it's not super enclosed. Um, I think it's the, the Blood Academy is the one that's like super wide open courtyard, which is lots of fun because you get to see all kinds of people run around and getting smoked. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of good variety of the levels, it, you know, super varied in terms of what you can see. I'm going up and down, uh, not just, you know, one or two levels here, but, you know, as you can see, it's super vertical in parts. Um, oh, man. To your right, to your right. Oh, thank you. Dude, <laughs> blood splatter from the right, you can so, talk from the right. So, so there's a little bit about the, the, the levels. In terms of the weapons and stuff, and that's the part I, I think I should be able to bring up now. Um, if you look at, no, I don't think I can, actually. Maybe it's at the very beginning. But the, uh, the neat thing is, and, and it works just like Call of Duty 4, is in the sense if you want new stuff, you have to unlock it. Yeah. So you basically, just like in Call of Duty 4, as you progress through the multiplayer game and you do well, you get basically uh, points that, that will totally rank up. rank up. Yeah, level you up. And as you do, you get different abilities and different guns and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's, that's really the key to it, is just playing through it and unlocking stuff. And, and as far as like Call of Duty 4, you know, I, I must have went through prestige mode like probably four or five times. Um, you know, by the fourth time around, I was pretty quick at, at leveling up. I could probably get like three or four levels in the first time going around. Um, but the reality with, with, with Killzone 2 is it seems like it's a little bit tougher in terms of um, the amount of time you got to put in to actually rank up and get further in the beginning. This, this actually looks really, really good. It, it does look really nice. I'm normally not a huge uh, PlayStation first-person shooter fan just because the controller kind of hurts my hands a little bit, but this definitely looks like something I will be getting. Oh, yeah. I am definitely looking forward to February 17th. I mean, for me, it's like, uh, you know, after all the video and everything that we've seen since this game was first shown. What, um, like two years ago? Oh, yeah, it was right? like forever, like two five years, years ago. Three years ago. Or something crazy. Yeah. But, uh, but for me, it's like, it's... It's it's pretty much it's pretty much what they were, were saying. It, so is there a melee? There is. There? Did you see me like throw so my gu can? my gun butt right there? So you're just gonna you're just gonna uh, pistol yeah. whip him kind of. Yeah, just throw up the gun butt and just like smack him in the face with it. If there was a medic nearby, that extra ten seconds you see me laying down on the ground there, they would be able to come by and revive me. But uh, but there is no medics. I've only seen a few medics so far as I've been playing the beta. Hey, I got a question. What's yes, up? Uh, Nick Carter from St. Louis. Uh, Ryan, before we were uh, looking at this game before the show began, you were saying that the, the game modes change at random, or how does that so, work? What kind so of game modes are they? It's interesting. So yeah, the game modes are pretty much as you would expect them to be. We've have, assassination is what they call their VIP mode. Um, so you're basically at that point looking for somebody that is the VIP, and you're supposed to take them down. Um, besides that, the team deathmatch they call body count. Um, so that oh look at me getting up right there. Because there was totally somebody there helping Go me medics. out. And then uh, we're going to kill some more Hellgas. And then as far as the, the rest of the stuff, there's Search and Destroy, which is basically Capture the Flag, uh, which has, or I should say Search and Retrieve, which also has a variation, which is Search and Destroy. Um, but that's pretty much uh, the deal. As far as 
what, well, the interesting thing, I've, I've been in a map, and uh, me and Kristen were talking about earlier, basically you can get into a match, and, and you can see right here it did it, assassination, you see a little box that appeared mm -hmm. up there? Yeah. Instead of going back to the lobby and having to have a new game mode, basically, and go through the whole rigmarole of going through it again, um, they are actually able to basically start a new game type at the end of one within the same level and map, so you yeah. don't have to quit out. No lobbies. You yeah, can totally. Just instantly. I I'm pretty sure you can totally do that if you are the dude running the server and you want to do that, but uh, I I I've been at times playing. The only thing I can't figure out is like how I get out of it when it keeps on going. So like I've been in you know a single map for like a half hour, and I need to go do something else. Yeah. But I don't want to quit out and like lose my stuff. So I it, think you just, I think you just have to quit out. Yeah, I I, I did quit out and, it, and I saw my stats and it looked like it. It, like it, it kind of kept it, but. So yeah, so still beta. It's still a long ways to February 17th, but I can say from the three levels they got right now with the, you know, with the, the game modes, uh, which are all of them that they have in here, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and it certainly is pretty. All right, let's do one more question really quick from Brian before we have to cut. Yeah, Octavio from Mexico has a question that's close to my heart. Ryan, uh, tell us about the controls. Tell us about the flexibility of the controls, that kind of thing. Absolutely. So uh, I'll, I'll run you through what we got right here. Uh, the controls are super basic, and there's basically I think four different uh, control schemes that we were looking at before the show, Brian. Um, up here on my on my R, or, sorry, my L1. This is my EOTech you know, zoom in view, so I can you know get up on people. Uh, it definitely slows your mobility down, obviously, as you can see. Um, on the other trigger, on my R1, that's my fire, and then on the uh, the L2, that's what I use for my crouching, and then on the R2, that's my grenade business, and then from there it is. Uh, it is, that, that's pretty much what you got. You can see these little slots down in the bottom left-hand uh, corner of the screen that are like kind of dark gray black. Let's see if I can get a better contrast on there that. There they are. So, so I believe when I get other fun stuff, that is where I'll be selecting those items using the D-pad. Uh, there's a jump button, so you can get your jump on. Jump seem to actually pretty much get, get you where you need to go unless you're not supposed to be there. Uh, but that's, uh, that's pretty much the extent of it. Oh, yeah, and then there's, of course, your you know, switching weapons button, which in this case, I have a pistol. But, uh, but yeah, and then the other thing, as far as the gameplay goes, when you're playing the multiplayer matches, it's just like you'd expect. You can run over and uh, you know a downed uh, enemy. You can pick up their ammo. You can pick up their weapons. So uh, early on, if you want to see something else, let's see if I can find a shotgun on some dude. Let's see if I don't just get blasted. One of your from teammates does. Yeah. You can kill him. That's the one thing I'll say is friendly fire is on. It seems like all the time, <laughs> and dudes like are always shooting me in the back. It's oh like, hey, it's a green. It's green. We should definitely shoot him. Oh, no yeah. guys, red means shoot. And that's that's red. what happens when you run in the middle of a courtyard like a dummy and get shot in the back. <laughs> so yeah, let that be a lesson to you all. All right. So really quick, one more time. What are yes. we coming out on? When are we coming out? Uh, February seventeenth for the PlayStation Three exclusively, and uh, it certainly looks good. Fantastic. Let's go. Uh, I believe we have an exploit of the moment right now, though, on one of my favorite games, Animal Crossing. Oh, super cool. So let's go ahead and check that out and find out how I can get more bells. In Animal Crossing City Folk, there is an entire city now available to explore, full of shops and services to spend your money on. But out here, in your town, the mercenary Tom Nook is the boss, and he wants his money. To get a bunch of those bells fast, you can slave away, fishing and picking fruit, or you can use a critical feature of the game's strict real-time gameplay to your advantage. What is this feature, you ask? It's the Wii System Clock. You see, in Animal Crossing City Folk, like the other Animal Crossing games before it, the game tracks the internal clock to determine what time it is, what day it is, and even what season it is. The clock is how Animal Crossing knows when it's your birthday, how much interest to pay on your bank deposits, and when to put on a fireworks show or cover the ground in snow. Wait, wait, what was that? Interest on your bank deposits? First, do a little fruit picking or collecting and sell them off to Tom. Get over to the bank and store some money in your account. Now, save to avoid the wrath of Rossetti the Mole and then get to the Wii menu. Go in and change the date to several years in the future. Then you can restart the game. When you get back to your town, you'll find weeds, roaches in your house, and various other indicators of all that time passing by, including some of your residents moving on to greener pastures. We never said this cheat wasn't going to change you or your town. The Nintendo Bank has a fair interest rate that will provide you some profit on your savings. Since we passed a huge amount of time almost instantly, you'll now have a ton of bells to spend, but it might not be worth all the weeding and bug stomping you'll be doing in the aftermath. One of the best ways to use this exploit is to rediscover a holiday that you may have missed, like Halloween or your birthday, if you just can't wait until next year. 
There's always the easy money, but Tom Nook is a patient animal. He knows you're good for it. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Sean is here with me, and we are going to go ahead. Yes, it is you. That is I'm me. Glad you can figure that out. Look at that. He's so big. He knows his name. I'm smart. <laughs> We're going to check out Crash Commando. So yes. really quick, exactly what is Crash Commando before we go ahead and hop into it? Crash Commando is basically a side-scrolling shooter. Um, when I first started playing it, it reminded me of this old PC game from a couple years ago called Soldat, which is like this indie um, 2D shooter, okay. which is sort of like a platformer, except you have a ton of guns and you can wreck dudes in really awesome ways. Guns and platforming, this definitely sounds like an awesome exactly, game. Exactly, yeah. And it sort of controls a little bit like uh, Bionic Commando. You move around with the left stick and you got the um, the right stick sort of adjust your uh, your aim with okay, the Okay, so but we've got. got red guys and kind of purpley blue guys. Yes, we are playing team deathmatch right now. Okay, so we're playing against bots or who are we playing against? We are playing against bots. It's a multiplayer game. You can do up to 12 people online. Ooh. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I don't think the online is working terribly well right now, so I'm playing against bots at the moment. But you've got jetpacks. So, okay, yeah. so we've got the red and the purpley yeah. guys that destroy you. Yeah, yeah. That was a bot. That was a bot. Um, is the AI really that good? or? Uh? Well, I have it set on easy right <laughs> now, actually, but the AI is pretty good. The, the cool thing about this game, besides the obvious, like, over-the-top gore, is, oh, oh, man. You getting worked by bots, and yeah. your bots killing those bots. Yeah, exactly. This um, is definitely the best game ever. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that may okay, be so, true. So what do you have for weapons? Because I see you have a jetpack, which isn't really a weapon, but you have... I've got... Um, what I've got right now is basically an assault rifle. I can go switch my class between battles. I can use stuff like rocket launchers. I can use a sort of plasma rifle and other things like that. The cool thing is that... You can drive cars. You can drive cars. And they've got these tracks on here, and some of them have, like, these mag magnets on them so that... Oh, also the other cool thing, there's two planes to each level. You can go into the foreground and the background and drive along these tracks that are sort of like magnetically charged so you can... I just ran that dude over, that was awesome. And uh, yeah, you can drive like all over the place and also just like how each character can use a jetpack. Uh -huh. Your car? Can, you've got a flying car. Totally, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty I'm awesome. just going to get this game and fly cars all day long, just because I can. <laughs> See what I can fly into? Car flying is pretty rad. Ooh. Oh, and if you fly into them, that was my next question. If you fly into them, do they splat? Apparently, yeah. yes. That is... And you can do a sweet little, like, Samus roll like this. Hey, Sean, I've got a question. Yeah. What's that little blue arc line coming off your guy? That's my, uh, that's pretty much the target of my... Your trajectory? Yeah, the trajectory of my weapon. That tells you where you're aiming. And you can move it all around with the with the right stick, and it feels a lot like Bionic Commando. Okay, so what's your what's your ultimate goal here? Just kill all the other guys to get to a certain point uh, numbers, or what? Yeah, team deathmatch. Exactly. I'm just trying to kill the blue guys. Any blue guys that I see, I don't know. I might have picked like too big of a map for this type of uh, to, for this type of game, but try uh, going down lower. Down lower. All right. Yeah. I can you? I can yeah, see so some of the guys. Yeah, they're back there, down inside. Yeah, you can see them fighting off in the distance. So what I would want to do is. Go back that way move over and here go downstairs. With my uh, sweet roll. John Sandy from Magnolia, Texas wants to know, is this is there a single player component to this game? There is a single player component, but I've, I've played the first few levels and as, as, as best I can tell, it pretty much serves as a way to introduce you to the controls of the game. That guy just got wrecked. Let me see if I can wreck. Oh, I So if I you, if, I noticed you were standing really close to that guy when you fired uh, that grenade. Um, or slash rocket, that's what I was looking for. Can you wreck, can you, I mean, can you wreck yourself? Uh, I think you can, yeah. Although I haven't done that too much. So there is suicide. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I just uh, chose the rocket launcher right here. This is one of the other, the other guns that you can use. Oh, that was it for this round. Oh, wow. There's another round coming. The bots beat you. Yeah, yeah. Adam yeah. Wilson wants to know, Adam Wilson from Seattle, and he wants to know, is there a level up system in this game? I don't believe there's any sort of level up system. You've got all the, the guns that you're going to get at the beginning. You do get power ups in the game. You get power ups that uh, boost your. Oh, see? <laughs> that was a suicide bomb. I killed that Beautiful. guy and myself. Uh, yeah, there's power ups that you can get, but there's no sort of like leveling system. No, uh, no Call of Duty 4 light here. Okay, is there any other modes besides Team Deathmatch here? Um, in this build that we have, there's Deathmatch and Team Deathmatch. I don't okay. know if there's going to be anything else in the final game. Um, and as of right now, there's currently no announcement for the release date or price, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. That is fine. Let's go see if we can, uh, yeah, go, go wreck that guy. Right? Go yeah. kill him. My favorite thing is running people over in this Jeep because they just explode in a cloud of blood. Can you go down? Oh, wait. Boom. Oh, wait. Friendly fire. <laughs> Boom. Friendly fire. That's how I roll. 
Uh, not a very nice person. <laughs> can you know can more than one person ride the Jeep? I don't think so. Uh, not that I've been able to see. Um, okay. There's also a tank that you can drive to, and you can fly that thing as well. <laughs> so I'm basically, just, if you're not on the Jeep, you're getting run over by <laughs> the Jeep. You are getting run over by me. That's <laughs> what's going to happen. And there's apparently double kills now, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get double kills and, and whatnot as well. I've got the, the shotgun. But, uh, nice. but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty fun. It's pretty much like um, a 2D side-scrolling Warhawk is how I would describe it. Fantastic. Okay, Sean. What is it coming out on, and uh, what is it going to drop for everyone to pick up? Uh, unfortunately, the release date, I don't think there's any information on that, but okay. this is a uh, this is a, it's a Sony game, so trophies and everything, and a PlayStation Network exclusive. Fantastic. Awesome. Yep. Let's go ahead and see what Brian's got going on over at his desk. Uh, what I've got is Adventure on the High Seas. Uh, recently, our own John Miller went to uh, check out uh, a game called Empire Total War, and he did it in the San Francisco Bay on a really old-timey ship, and this is a pretty cool piece, so check it out. What's up, everybody? John Miller on the decks of the Hawaiian Chieftain, an 1800 Napoleonic combat vessel. But you know what? We're not here to mess around. We are here to go to war with the Lady Washington. You can actually see her off to the starboard side right there. And why are we here? Is to teach you naval tactics for none other than one of the most anticipated PC games of the coming months, Empire Total War. Let's talk keys to victory. First thing, the transom shot. Tell us about the transom and how it will debilitate the Lady Washington. A transom shot is basically the rear end of the boat. Um, normally it's uh, where the captains live, the mates live, all the high-ranking officers. Uh, it's really important. Normally like the ship's wheel or the tiller is back there. Uh, so if you can like take out, you know, these key factors in a ship like the rudder or, you know, command staff. Those are really important things, especially on a ship. Um, you know, when we're looking at command staff, if your captain goes down, your morale goes way down. Another good maneuver is kind of crossing the T, is, is getting uh, in front of their bow uh, for a broadside shot. Tell us about that and how it can uh, take out a ship. For a broadside, you would have lines and rows of big guns. And when you're shooting a giant cannonball through wood, and you're probably going to be hitting close to the water line. So where the water meets the boat, you puncture that, water starts rushing in, and down goes your boat. Whereas if you're really trying to take aim at someone's rudder or strategic parts on the boat, uh, that's when you start looking for prizes, because you're not going to be sinking it. You're just going to be crippling it. And then at that time, you know, crews do their boarding parties uh, or maybe just take grape shot with these swivel guns and wipe out crew. Ahoy, mateys, we are aloft atop the Hawaiian Chieftain, the mighty naval power of the San Francisco Bay. We recently sunk the Lady Washington with our three and two pound guns, using the wind, using naval tactics, and several successful trance and shots. You can use those tactics in Empire Total War. Look for that game to hit the PC sometime in the first quarter of 2009. There you go, there's a look at Empire Total War, and incidentally, ever since John Miller got back from that trip, he's been threatening to swab everyone's decks. I don't know what that means. Uh, Chris and Riley is standing by right now with Lark Anderson. What do you got over there? We have nothing that includes ships, but a very vague title that could go one of two ways. So we have Savage Moon. We, which, we have Savage which, Moon. And, what, what, you know, what could that possibly entail? I don't know. I mean, when you think about Savage Moon, you think about something that either has werewolves in it or like terrible boy bands. Please this tell has me neither, it's okay. Thank, thank God. This is actually pretty much Starship Troopers, the game. But You're, yeah, where's my dude with a gun? 
You, you don't need dudes with guns. You get turrets here. This is a tower defense type game. Um, it's coming out on the PlayStation Network exclusively, and um, it's pretty much like you know every other tower defense game that's out there. Basically, you've got you know uh, you're on basically a, a living asteroid apparently that's infested with these uh, kind of terrible bug. alien bug things, and I have to build defenses against them. And you know I, I work for pretty much the cheapest company in the world because. You know, they're all like, oh, so aliens are coming, but you only have two platforms to build guns on. I'm like, okay, that's, uh, that's nice. So this big old hole over here to the left is kind of like where they're going to come out of, or? Exactly. So, well, right now, the next wave is actually flying units, and you can actually pan the camera around and check them out. So this is like a bug, like, hive or something. Can you spawn camp? Um, well, I totally am right here. <laughs> I've got guns waiting I for think, them I to think come that's out. the best way to do this here. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the, the other... Uh, types of like nests are here and you know apparently it doesn't make much sense to like nuke or like just you know otherwise blow up the nests you have to like wait for the dudes to come out and so that's what the meter is up on the top and um, a wave's about to come out right now and let's see do you ever know where they're going to come from or do it you have to kind of gives around? you uh, it seems like they kind of give you an idea where they're going to come from based on um, it says they're coming but I don't see them well, they're air units, so so they're coming from right there. Ah, gotcha. Um, so so in this game, like I've got I've got this is my standard machine gun tower. I've got anti-air towers down here. Anti-air towers obviously deal more damage, but the machine gun towers can target air units as well, which is nice. Um, and it kind of I think gives you a sense of what direction they're going to come from based on where the arrows are, like top or bottom of the screen. Okay. Looks like there's going to the be um, a wave of actual land like bugs this time around. I've got five additional. Um, towers I can place, so I'm going to beef up my defenses here a little bit more, and then I'm going to go ahead and actually research upgrades, which are also very important. So, Lark, what are these? Where are these bugs trying to go? Oh, so they're trying to take out my my like mining camp. So, so these. Uh, let's see. Where is my mining camp this time around? Oh, there it is. This is the entrance right here to, the, to my bunker. Um, my guys here are are you know living it dangerously, living on a a asteroid with dudes inside that don't like you, and so, um, yeah. I so what are the different what are the different type of type of turrets you can get? So you said you have anti anti air ones. You have like machine gun ones. Yeah, you've got standard machine gun towers. You've got anti air towers. You can research um, stuff like uh, blocking towers, lets you build a wall that says, hey, you guys got to go around this unless you blow it up. Then we've got laser towers because lasers are always super rad. Um, you also got upgrade towers. Uh, or sorry, repair towers, and you can research upgrades to level three and four towers. Right now, because um, I'm kind of low on cash, I actually forced the uh, the next wave of aliens to come out. Uh, yeah, you're rocking menu, that, dude. Kind of nice uh, that you can do that. Like, I've got plenty of time right now. I'm just going to go ahead and let's see. We've got more. We've got more like land-based dudes coming out here, so I'm going to upgrade this dudes. tower. So we've got little crap type guys. We've got flying guys. Are there any other types of uh, guys? Uh, yeah, out? they actually they actually evolve over time. And so this next wave is going to look probably a little bit different, or at least it's going to be a lot tougher than the previous one. And so I'm going to go ahead, and because I've got extra time, and because I know that it gives me a bonus, I'm going to say, hey, you guys can come out now. It's kind of weird that you can do that, but um, it's very helpful for when there's you know, a lot of downtime uh, between different waves. So they can kind of multiple little spawn areas. They do, yeah. These guys have two, two like nests here, and then there's the two like hives for air units. And so the next wave, it looks like, is just going to be uh, air units, and so I'm going to want to um, you know, make sure that I'm ready for that, but it seems like I'm doing pretty good as far as that's concerned. I might just want to upgrade one of these guys. Okay, let's go side. ahead, while we're uh, waiting for for these guys to die, let's have a question from Brian real quick. Yeah, Matthew Skingle from uh, Great Britain wants to know, is there a story to this game? What's the plot? Um, well, the plot is pretty simple. It's like you're your company, your mining company, is just you know trying to find these uh, resources in these eye moons, and um, there's bugs inside of them, and so you need to you know kill the bugs and protect your workers' health, which I is actually that that little plus symbol up on the top right. That's the amount of health that my uh, mining operation currently has, and apparently alien bugs do not uh, bode well for that. Okay, so when these guys are coming out and they're attacking you, are you able to upgrade or repair your towers during that wave, or do you have to wait till that wave is over? Oh yeah, you can upgrade and repair whenever you want. The thing is, like right now, I can only lay down eight more. Um, like the top right number, that's the number of platforms I can put down, and then um, I, I'm also restricted by the amount of money that I have, because apparently the company pays me a bounty for every kill, 
and um, like I said, they're really cheap about things, and so um, you know you think that they'd want to place their safety of their workers first, but that's uh, apparently your job. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, let's kill these last couple dudes, uh, and then we have some more destruction to go check out over on the couch. Uh, I've got a question while you're doing that. Nathaniel um, Pantano from Delaware wants to know, what happens when you lose? Do you have to start the entire level over, or how does that work? Um, when you lose, you do have to start the level over, yeah. Okay. Okay, Lark. What is this coming out on? When is it coming out? And do you happen to have a price? I, I actually don't have a price or a release date. I'm told that it should be near the end of this year, mm -hmm. um, but that hasn't confirmed yet. And uh, as far as platforms, it's going to be a PlayStation Network exclusive game, and it you know, supports trophies and all that good stuff. Fantastic. So Q4-ish, possibly PS3. Let's go over and check out Brian, though, because I know he's got Sophia and Don over there, and uh, I think Don is itching to maybe destroy something Sophia's built, because they're <laughs> nice like that. Yeah, that's right. I've got uh, joined by Sophia Tong and Don Francis, and we're checking out A Kingdom for Keflings. Sophia, the first question I have for you is, why in the sweet, feathery Christmas are you this tall? I, well... That doesn't seem right. I actually made my avatar pretty short, but in this game, you play as the giant. Okay. And it, since it launched yesterday, it launched with the new Xbox... Um, experience so you can create your own avatar and stick yourself in the game and it's a city building game where you can actually take you know build your own stuff help out the keflings um, and, and so the keflings are the little folk yeah the little guys with hats okay and so you boss them around and tell them what to do you can pick them up and you popped his head off no you take no? off his hat so if you want them to do stuff um, okay. You just plop them down on the logs, and then you plop them down at the lumber mill or wherever you want them to go, and they'll automatically move back and forth. But if you want them to change their job, you just take off their hat, and then plop them down somewhere else, and okay. they'll just, you know, kind of readjust. <laughs> and so they, they, all you got to do is take off their hat? Yeah, to make them switch duties. Interesting. That's it. It's like, if you like city building games, um, it takes out all the management of, like, money, taxes. You don't have to be this evil overlord, you know jacking up the taxes and stuff, because they're happy. You can yeah, even kick them and folks. stuff, and yeah. they'll still, you know, yeah. do Obviously, their job. Obviously, this city has been, uh, it's pretty de pretty well developed. How, how long have you spent on this particular city? I wouldn't say well developed, because <laughs> Dawn's making fun of me about my inefficiencies, but uh, this took me maybe uh, two, three hours okay. to, to develop. And what you do is, uh, as soon as you develop like, one building, you unlock more blueprints. Mm -hmm. So if you use the right bumper, you can pull out, uh, pull up all the blueprints. And ah. the goal is to eventually build your Keflings, like a nice kingdom with a castle. I think Don's almost there because he's addicted to this game. And uh, I already finished it. You oh. finished it. I got my castle this morning. You still weren't done. <laughs> so, well, you know. so it's, it seems like a, a pretty um, light-hearted game. What, what's what, what's antagonizing you here? What's what's go going against you? If you don't have money, you don't have to worry about your, your people are all happy. What what's the challenge here? Well, that's the beauty of it. You just it's for like people with OCD. I think you just start playing and you just get sucked in because there are there's nothing to destroy your houses unless you want to punch them yourself. I mean, there's no there's no threat of failing. You uh -huh. just kind of play, and it's really easy to pick up. Yeah. So like anyone can just jump in and play, and it's you know it's kind of just casual, laid back. Yeah. You know, you just have a good time. If you don't want to play, fine, save and quit. And, and you can run rampant and destroy your whole town too, right? You can. You just punch. Like Once you punch them, it breaks down into the parts. Okay. And then you can break down each individual part, and they'll turn into the resources that you need, you had originally collected to make it. So you don't lose anything, actually. You just pick it back up. Again. So there are a finite amount of resources in, in the world, right? No, no, it's unlimited. Good Lord, you can do anything you want in this game. Yeah, I guess, well, I haven't, like, mined everything, but I guess Dawn's finished it, so I guess it's... Yeah. Unlimited. Around the borders, there's unlimited patches of crystals, rocks, trees, etc. That never disappears. Never disappears. Okay. Never extinguishes. Yeah. Thanks for completely demolishing my <laughs> town. No problem. All right. Well, uh, let's get a question from Kristen about a kingdom for Kathleen. Definitely. Nick from St. Louis wants to know if the little guys do something you don't like, can you throw them in jail or something? <laughs> no, but you can kick them and. That just kind of distracts them for a little bit. Uh -huh. Does that yeah. hurt your rating oh, all you in the game? Or? No, there's no rating. They they actually go back and collect more stuff. You can get cut your, them across the get entire... Get in gear, dude. They, they want you to kick one. No, we're kicking. Oh, we're kicking. Oh, I'm we're not kicking looking. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to watch but it. But then they go back and you know do their job. They're very obedient. Yeah. 
And so, do they, I, I mean, obviously, you don't start. <laughs> you don't start with a ton of these. I, I, assuming they multiply as you go. Yeah. So when you start off, you only have a small handful, and you build houses. And then once you build a house, uh, the mayor or like the game gives you a little heart. Yeah. And you put the heart in the house, which you know creates a family because you need love to start a family. Naturally. And then so two keflings will come out of that, and then that's how you kind of multiply. So oh, whenever you get a little heart piece, that's how you can. Uh, grow your keflings. So let me ask you, obviously you've got your avatar in here. Could yeah. a friend come and play with his his or her avatar and join you? Is there a multiplayer? There's an online um, co-op mode. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get a chance to play it. Don, have you tried it? Yeah, it's pretty good. I played <laughs> it for a couple minutes. So I mean, you just have someone come in, mm -hmm. you build together, you stay together, but you don't really... Uh, Punch each other? Well, no, can, yeah, can really. you kick each other? You know, to be honest, we didn't try. I'm, I'm more of uh, the passive rather than the aggressive. I understand. Yeah. Clearly, because you're totally kicking down my entire city. But, but it's cooperative. You're not competing against one another, right? Correct. Okay. But anytime you build a building, it raises your flag on it, so that each of these buildings has a flag. Mm -hmm. And if someone else builds the building, it raises their flag on it. So here's the question then. Sure. If, we're, if Don, you and I are playing this game and you've got more flags, can, we, can I rip down all your buildings and take the credit for them? Theoretically, yeah. Anytime okay. uh, you can go up to a building, you can punch it, and it'll go into its component parts, uh -huh. and then you just pick up one of the parts and put it back down mm -hmm. and it rebuilds the building. Beautiful. And then you get credit. So then actually some of the achievements are to actually have multiple flags within a town. Okay. And speaking of achievements, Don, I know you're really into that. This seems like a really easy achievement game. Would that be, the, is that the case? Uh, yeah, there are two secret achievements. One is loosely associated with kicking, uh -huh. though okay. I don't know anyone who has unlocked that particular the achievement. The bully one? Oh, that's oh there. look at there. You big bully? Yeah. Just keep kicking. That's right. Just keep kicking. <laughs> Man. And then another one is actually to go to the stone cutter, or the sculptor, excuse me, and have a sculpture made in your image. But if you're playing with your own avatar, uh -huh. you don't get that luxury. You have to play as one of the prefab characters. Hey, guys, what about seasons? Are there, like, seasons in this game at all? I think we've seen yeah, a couple. They yeah, they keep changing. Yeah. And it changes the music. And apparently it affects, like, how quickly they work, too. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, there's no slowing down in the winters. Good to kicking, Don. Get to <laughs> kicking. Get back to work. Yeah. Well, it's funny. If they're carrying stuff, you kick them, they drop their goods, and you pick it up, and you can also help out and like just move stuff around. But right. that's not very efficient. That's well, this game's out now, right, Sophia? Yeah, it came out yesterday. So it's on Xbox Live okay. Arcade, and I think it's selling for 800 uh, Xbox uh, Microsoft points. All right, and Don, I'm assuming we'll have a review of it soon? Uh, I'm assuming so. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, guys. We appreciate that. Right now, we're going to, uh, last week, we, have, of course, wanted to have some last remnant uh, video footage on the show, but technical dif difficulties got in the way, but we were able to give away some posters, signed posters of The Last Remnant. Right now, we want to check out some actual gameplay footage from The Last Remnant, uh, and then we are going to get to the winners of last week's contest, who, those guys who won all those awesome posters. So first, check out the gameplay, and then we'll announce the winners. require Better now?
So there you go. There's a look at Last Remnant. I guess that's out today, Chris. Yeah, it's out today, definitely. Yeah, so uh, uh, sorry we couldn't get that to you guys this uh, last week, but we're happy to show that to you today. Uh, right now, I guess we want to get to the winners because we gave away those posters last We did. Week. We gave away posters. We gave away Naruto DS games and also Naruto Wii games. All right. So let's yeah. fire those winners up. Uh, these are the. Uh, those guys, it's all usernames. Yeah, so it's those all guys won names. those games. These guys won the DS games. The, the the top like three or four users were the guys who won the posters. So yes. congratulations. Yeah, it was them. it was posters, Wii games, DS games. All right. So, so look for an email from me, and if it if it look it, it's from me. Yeah. It's from Kristen. Okay. So if you see that email, that's prize Reply enough. to it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You guys get my email. No, that's not. <laughs> and you sent a poster in the the, the poster. Yep. It'll come in a tube. Okay, so good. it won't be squished. I'm so not gonna like, fold, fold it. it <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it. It's gonna be a really pretty origami little. Swan is what you're going to get. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, sure cool. you'll appreciate that. Well, congratulations to all those winners. That's great news. Uh, let's get it's to the calendar. calendar. Yep. Uh, first of all, guys, uh, of course, from the bleachers, Monday, um, a special Thanksgiving episode. Nothing special, just that's when it happens. Uh, and uh, let's see, Call of Duty Wo World at War is that's our game. That's going to be fun. Now. Yeah. Uh, that game is horrifically violent. And uh, a hotspot on Tuesday. As always. As always. Next page. Next page. <gasps> what? We're not here next week. Wait, you're not, we're not doing a shot that you and I were well, just coming Well, you in. can. I'm not. Oh, really? Heck no. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Uh, I'm actually heading north uh, to my parents' house. Oh, going so. ahead north. All right, so no Thanks show, no on the spot next week, but you know, you guys are probably eating turkey anyway and watching football. That's what I'm going to be doing. sleeping. Yeah. Turkey yeah. coma. And, uh, but Monday, after we all get back, we're going to be doing a Prince of Persia marathon. That looks good. Yep, Monday, De December 1st at 2 p.m., so that'd be really cool. We I can't believe it's December already. Yeah, I know. It's it's amazing. Dude, we, uh, we get a happy birthday. Getting to the end of the year. That's right. We do have a happy birthday. Uh, Normally we, we don't do this, we, but we well, we, we do it for Tracy. Tracy's yeah. the show producer. He he wanted us to give a shout out to his girlfriend Rachel. Happy birthday, Rachel. Happy birthday, Rachel. Well done. Uh, you made it through another year. With Tracy, nonetheless. Yes, that's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, okay. So that that's it. Yeah, uh, we're done. No trivia. No, no kill zone two beta codes, guys. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry about that. Not our call. Uh, we wish, believe me, if we had them, we would have given them out. If we had them, we'd be playing it right now. That's right. So. Uh, all right, so uh, everyone have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. If you're traveling, be safe. Pa stay patient during those long lines at the airport. Yes, oh, Lord. And we'll see you in two weeks on the next episode of On the Spot. Bye.